Welcome back to the Thrashing Couch, take two of this second interview with APOC. I'm the Thrash Man himself, the creator Colin Sterling, and we're here with Brett again and... I'm Greg. I'm, I bang the drums. Figuratively or literally? Literally. Okay, so when you're doing your time signatures, does it equals the rate of the balls? It equals 13, okay? 13-8, <laughs> that's my favorite. Alrighty then. Brett, how are you doing since the last time we met? Oh, I'm doing good. Yeah, things have been, life's been crazy, but it's uh, it's nice to be chatting again. That's awesome, man. It's great, great to have you guys back. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. More importantly, you guys are on the verge of releasing your new EP. I saw videos from Alex Snipe of Unbowed, Become Astrals, Crimson Shadows, and whatever band he drums in. <laughs> every, every band. <laughs> every band, basically, that... You finish your drum recordings. What's that like to know that you're one step further to finishing the album? It's relieving to be honest, to be done, at least be done my job and then now I don't have to worry about it. Now it's I'm waiting for them to do their shit. I can just sit back, focus on other stuff, like Becomes Astral, all that other stuff that I'm working on. Oh, you're in Become Astral too? Yep. I tried to get an interview with you, Alex and Lane, would you mind? Trying to help me figure that sure, out. Sure, I'll message him. Okay, but the only the only deal is Lane has to wear the Lane's World hat. He will. That's Li all he wears. Liam should be there too, because uh, Liam and Lane are like, R becomes Astral. Yeah. Him and Alex are just <laughs> yeah. him and Alex are just in it. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, sorry to distract that from the interview, but Brett, what, could you answer the question? Um, about the EP, we've been writing this EP uh, since like last year. Uh, like kind of rehashing a bunch of old songs and yeah it's uh, like Greg said it feels very relieving to be finally have the drums done we actually recorded the drums the same day I wrote my exam for my uh, gas fitting school so that was like the most relieving day I've had like all year like I slept really well that night <laughs> and yeah it just feels good to be uh, on the road to getting some new stuff out so as you got to see we played two new songs tonight so I think the new songs have been received well, thankfully, and um, I'm really looking forward to just hearing them back to myself yeah. uh, in the recorded version, let alone, let alone sharing them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, two things. One, congratulations on doing your final. I hope you pass with flying colors. Thank you. I actually just heard that I did pass. Oh, nice. congratulations Woo! again. You are now a free man. But more <laughs> importantly than that, I the song that I want to talk about is the last song you played. Yeah. That. I promised my stepdad I wouldn't swear on this channel, so that flubbing, Ooh. amazing <laughs> song. Flub? It, flub, which you can also find on our channel too, because we interviewed them, because Very I cool. ask everyone for an interview. <laughs> Gotta interview those US bands. Exactly, I have to support some of them sometimes whenever they come around. Besides that, the, the song was phenomenal. Just Thank you. the whole instrumental part of it brilliant loved it i thought it was amazing Look, definitely looking forward to the lyrics part of it do you how do you feel knowing that there's still more to come from that song um i feel like excited but i feel challenged also because i have the concept for the lyrics already created but it's a topic that i'm not used to writing about so that's why i'm seeing like the challenge ahead okay. um that song is eight and a half nine minutes long and it's going to be about uh it's gonna be about Man. yeah. It's gonna be about child soldiers and human trafficking, so it's like quite a strong topic, and I just feel that like I'm gonna to try to write about the psychology behind someone who goes through that type of thing. So oh, so I'm I'm researching it right now, and I'm it's gonna be pretty intense. Like it's gonna be it's not it's not necessarily gonna be from an activist point of view. It's gonna be like it's gonna be twisted. Okay, yeah. So. We'll see what, what comes out of it, but it's exciting and it's challenging also to know that that's that there's still a little bit to come from that. Yeah, I think I'm super happy with how it was fucking like received. It it was beyond my expectations of how well that came. Everyone after the show is saying how much they enjoyed that song. That song got a lot of good good uh, response tonight, and also actually we just finalized that song I think last Friday or like yeah. a, about a so, week ago we finished that song so we just finished it and we we're like let's do it three more times let's yeah. play it next week <laughs> yeah. yeah so and we just, actually we were actually debating playing it tonight because we were like are we ready and then last night we we're like nah we're playing it we're doing <laughs> it so, so I'm happy with how that was received and 
I'm pretty excited for how the lyrics are going to turn out because yeah. already, like you said, as an instrumental, it's very, it's such a banger of a song, right? Yeah. It's very intense. I just want to add about that song that Ira actually wrote most yep. of that song, and that's his first real contributions to APOC. So that's kind of follows up with the question you asked him last time yeah. about his contributions to the band. That's right. So whenever people hear this song, it's very fast, it's very aggressive, and praise uh, him. Yeah, and it's Ira's first real contributions. Greg and I participated ideas. I wrote probably four or five riffs in the song, but uh, and then we arranged it as a band. But a lot of that song is Ira's baby, so it's it's pretty cool to see like his contribution get a lot of uh, positive response. Excellent. Ira, as Brett mentioned, you can see him and Brett in the first interview we did with them or hear it because you can't really see us in it. And hopefully this is better kind of thing. How do you feel about the lighting situation now? It's nice. It's, it's uh, it almost feels like I'm being interrogated in, in a very friendly, <laughs> in a very friendly way against this concrete wall. <laughs> Perfect. I like it. Greg, how does it feel to finally be on Thrasher's Paradise, the hottest channel since j -Hot Films? Awesome. Way better than j -Hot Films, I must say. Yay! No, well, I've watched both, your videos. Both channels have sold merch for us. Yeah. That is, I, I and love, I, I, I think Colin all. made us more money. Just, <laughs> just saying. Chris. Chris. <laughs> no, I love Chris. Chris, he went to Quebec Death Fest with us. Yeah. He sold oh, merch yeah. for us there. Such a cool guy. We bought it over Revocation so much at that time. <laughs> but no, it's awesome to be on the show because I've watched a lot of the videos and I was like, this is awesome. So thank you so it's much. A pleasure. I really appreciate you watching the videos. It's really awesome. Now, as we, as I mentioned earlier, this EP is coming out soon, and we will have you guys back on to help promote the EP. Have you guys figured out a name for it yet? Um. Couple we're ideas. We're we, still entertaining. Yeah. We have some ideas, but nothing's like concrete yet. I think we're we're I think we're leaning towards one of the song titles okay. for the EP. Um, I feel we, like if we gave it away, it wouldn't really you wouldn't really understand why unless yeah, yeah. the other songs were there, kind of. And I get that. I respect that. I don't. I don't want you guys to give away any of your unsettled unsettled title names yet fair enough, fair enough. i'm um, just asking the yeah yeah we yeah we're yeah the title is still kind of being decided but all the songs are set in stone except for that last said lyrics okay um the art's not complete yet but we're certain that the album is going to be done recording by the end of october might not have the masters until early november but uh I don't think we're going to try to release it this year because we want to try to set up a promotional campaign with our, our PR guy yeah. and uh, and release some singles, do the pre-order thing. So by, th by the time we get the masters and do that, um, probably early next year would be the best time to release it. Hell yeah, man. Smart and, thinking. Uh, yeah. Unless we, unless we get an offer from a label, then we're flexible to work with that too. But <laughs> yeah. right now we're not desperate. You're not desperate like Street Horse? We're not no. desperate for a label. Like we're We enjoy doing the independent stuff. It's a bit more gratifying and less of a stress for sure. Yeah, the only thing we really need a label for is to print us vinyls, honestly. Yeah, the like money. We, we, <laughs> the we, money. We print CDs efficiently ourselves. Our CDs are nice quality. We print shirts ourselves. So, And I don't mind doing that ourselves either. And yeah. now that I have a new job, like we're able to do all that ourselves. So really, they're just the vinyls. So. Awesome. Now, as your friend and as a fan, I have come up with an album name that might work. You don't have to use it for this album, maybe for an album for hey, a future. Well, I love suggestions. Our EP was come up with Greg by Greg's brothers. So. Apocalypse, yeah. yeah. Apocalypse. <laughs> Excellent. Here's what I'm thinking. So since it's after Awakening Inception, how about Second Awakening? Possibly. Could work. Or maybe as a concept album name? Maybe the next full length could have something to do with that, yeah. Yeah, maybe a that's second. A, that's definitely an idea I never thought of, so. Yeah. We like following up on stuff like that. Like, yeah. the first song on Awakening Inception was called Time Perspective Brackets Ouroboros Reborn, and the last song from Apocalypse is called Ouroboros Broken. So we kind of like to tie stuff in like that. Yeah. So that would be cool, yeah, to tie something in. We'll definitely in again. keep that in mind. That's a good idea. Awesome, they actually gave a positive feedback to my idea. Yes. 
Now, gentlemen, you guys have been off and on on the road a lot, and last time we saw you before tonight here at Starlight, which is, yes, named after a Muse song, I am pretty sure, let's be honest. Kitchener, get more original. <laughs> we saw you at Guelph Death Fest. Now, how is that to be part of such a star-studded lineup like Unbowed, Become Astrals, like we mentioned earlier, Invicta, Eaten by Sharks, and even headlining the show Beyond Creation? That show was awesome. Like it was like kind of a uh, what sort of looking for? It was kind of like a like a victory story, like a redemption story because the venue got changed like the day before the show, and it could have got canceled, but everything worked out. All the bands slayed. Like I wasn't disappointed with a single band. No. All the bands on that, I was a fan of, and <laughs> yeah, we we really love uh, Flub, Brought by Pain, and so it was awesome to see all those bands and I actually think it worked out slightly better because both stages were in the same room yeah. whereas yeah. the other venue was different floors and oh, yeah. sometimes people will uh, well, they'll miss the second floor if that happens but yeah it was, a, it was an honor to play with such awesome bands Beyond yeah. Creation Brought by Pain all those guys yeah it was it was our well, we've played with most of those bands several times too, so it's it's always nice to uh, play 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 with friends bands and stuff, and a lineup that you know is going to be really good and a lot of fun. Excellent. Now, side note, we just had the first ever interruption on the channel. Oh, <laughs> History. We are we apologize to whoever Brett ignored. Not really. This is more important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say it all. You say it all. He has the final say, and the final say is... I love you, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jess. This is my girlfriend that called. Uh, oh, he hung... Wow. Good luck tonight. I feel important now. Shit, man. I didn't realize you liked me that much, man. I, I, would, have, I would have ignored anyone who called right now. <laughs> Damn, man. He's determined Colin's to do this interview. A soft spot in there. <laughs> So, Greg, since you're the new member, do you have it, or since you're the newest featured member on the channel? I was going to say. I know, right? I fixed that mid sentence because I'm smart with my words, Redem even though I have a speech impediment. Re redemption. <laughs> this is just a redemption episode, I feel. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. That, maybe that's what we'll call it APOC Redemption, redemption Interview. interview. Yeah. I actually really like that. I'll, I'll make that the title. Greg, do you have a significant other? I do. Her name's Jamie. She works just over there. She came to the show, which is awesome. But, yeah. This is the first time in the history of APOC that everyone in the band has had a significant other. It's funny because she called me earlier and I ignored her. <laughs> but I pocket dialed her, so. Oh! <laughs> Side note, they're not getting late tonight. <laughs> At least this won't be up. We still have each other, okay? <laughs> They don't know how many times we've boinked each other yet. There's a couple videos. <laughs> Just kidding. When you're on tour, it gets lonely, man. <laughs> Mr. Sacco! <laughs> Mr. Happy needs to be satisfied somehow. Yeah. But <laughs> Jesus Christ, I love this interview already. <laughs> Okay, you got to perform tonight with Century of Decay and Experiment Spe Specimen. I keep screwing up their name and I asked them for an interview. Yes, I do that a lot. <laughs> what was it like to perform with two great bands? Uh, it was our first time playing with both these bands, so that was awesome. Um, we've been friends with Centuries of Decay for a while. Well, their bass player we've been, we've been friends with for at least five years and then yeah the guitarist and drummer for a couple years also so it's really really nice to finally be able to play with those guys we always tried to set up a show with them before right yeah, so yeah, finally awesome. being able to do it it was awesome and uh i gotta say like yeah they were fantastic live there you know, they they've earned every bit of success that they've got so yeah. far experiment specimen i have nothing but good things to say about them too they i'm really looking forward to hearing their full-length album when it comes out next year um, I thought 
I thought their their live sound was pretty thick tonight. The bass was sounding clanky, and the guitar was sounding just heavy. And I like their riffs a lot. Yeah. Good groove, creative, and uh, experiment experimental riff ideas. If I was the drummer of that band, I would have so much fun. Like yeah. literally, you could just improvise and do anything. All the drummers. Footwork tonight was super on point. Corey, Greg, um, Derek, Derek uh, all, all the double kicks were like just wailing. Helps when all the bands have triggers because it makes all the bands yeah. sound more professional. <laughs> I, I honestly would say this show was as satisfying to play as Guelph Death Fest. I was like super looking forward to the show coming. And all, again, all the bands were just awesome and I was looking forward to play with them. Yeah. So. Hell yeah, man. For me, I don't know why, but I felt like Century of Decay kind of reminded me of Strapping Young Lad for some reason. I don't know why. Just some of the maybe, cleans. Maybe the vocals a little bit. Yeah, yeah. vocals, the guitar riff maybe kind of I don't really, I never really listened to Strapping Young Lad a whole lot, so I can't really relate to that as much, but some of the riffs and atmospheres I got from them reminded me of older Fallujah also. Okay. So... But I, I, I can hear the vocal similarities just from what I recall. I'm, Greg, any add-ons? Nothing, but they're phenomenal. Yeah. Like, I watched the Vakken video and they killed it. Pleasure. Killed it in front of my face, too. <laughs> yeah, I watched a couple of their live stream, like, they uh, live streamed a couple of their sets when they were out in, I don't know, on tour on the West Coast or the band they were touring with live streamed. And, yeah, they're a fantastic live band if anyone has the opportunity. Definitely check out Centuries of Decay, and I'm sure we'll be playing with them in Experiment Specimen probably again next I'll year. I'll support you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, probably, we'll probably play with both bands next year again. Yeah. You can tell I'm not used to doing this. So yeah. <laughs> it's a workout. Yes. My new workout method because I refuse to go to the gym. I need to do an interview today. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. So, Colin, who, who would you like to see us play with? Honestly? Like pick a big band maybe. Or who would you like to see us try to tour with or something? Honestly, for some reason, that's a load. That is a really loaded question. Um, loaded. Yeah, it's because there's a lot of bands you could go with that would be perfect. What if it was a festival then? Right now, cause cause you guys are doing have the space theme. I'm just right at the top of my head. I'm thinking of Rings of Saturn. Just cause you both have that space theme right now. It'd be uh, that'd be good for us success-wise for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking of right off the bat. But oh, I I thought that was <laughs> I thought sorry, Josh. I thought you were playing something on your phone, and I just went <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Can, can we put a pin on that right now? Because all I can think of is Ring, Ring of Saturn. That would be perfect because of the re lyrics, lyrically yeah. and conceptly, both all space. Right. That will be on the re-redemption interview. Yeah. Or a bit later on when I think of something and go, wait, I thought of it. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Now, a recurring theme we seem to have on the channel is former Valken Battle participants or winners. Do you guys ever think that might be something you might be interested in doing? Go for it. I don't think we really like doing Battle of the Bands. No. We did one time ago and... We get kind of butthurt when we, we lose to shitty bands. We'll be honest. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, like... I was pretty like, butthurt when so I did it with the snare from this Battle of the Bands we did time ago. I'll say the drummer was phenomenal. Maverick Freitas, great drummer. Oh, yeah. But I, I'll be honest, I was buttered. <laughs> yeah, not all not all bands, obviously, especially the bands that win Battle of Bands, are usually good bands. And like Centuries, they they earned it, they deserve it. But it, it is um, a crowd pleaser type thing, I would say. Yeah, like I just feel like we we might get discouraged if we didn't get what we felt like we were prepared to yeah. to take. Like I, I I honestly feel like last year when we had our old lineup, if we pursued the whack and metal battle instead of doing our tour i feel like we would have won it because i think that our old lineup is probably as sharp as apoc sounded like we had two guitar players taylor's a prodigy like we probably we, yeah kyle's live energy we got everyone in the band moving plus around. kyle and i were doing vocals at the time like i i feel like we probably would have won it but we just it wasn't the right time for us 2018 apoc and if you want to hate on me for saying that 
buy an album and fuck off. <laughs> so as you can tell, they are sore losers. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I work hard as shit, and, like, I don't like uh, someone else telling me that it ain't good enough but when, you, but you know when what's good? we can just work hard and get what we want the, the hard-working way. For the first time ever, we're going to have to move our stuff during the interview. We're going to keep recording. Okay, Josh, bring bring the camera over. Bring the camera over. This is what it looks oh, like. Oh, wait, hold on. we got to move all this stuff, too. Damn. Well, who's, whose van is that? Okay, we'll pause. You, you guys mind if we pause? Yeah. This okay. is a commercial break brought to you no by Cadbury. Cadbury, we Just love you. <laughs> Here you go. Hi, I'm Brett. Hey, I'm Greg. And then there's Ira, and we're APOC. And we need another guy. I play bass. I don't play the guitar. But you will. We need someone like you to be like Ira and play with us. <laughs> you better be able to play the leads, rhythms, and everything that's Read included. Read the fine print and, and fill the gas tank. And play guitar pro. Gentlemen, please help these two very important death metal band members. They need another guitarist. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, Asian, Caucasian. Wait, Caucasian and white are the same thing, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that you can shred like God. No, not that God, Lemmy. Please help them out. They need you. Please help them out. Greg, will you cry? I'm crying right now. Right, how desperate are you? I'll cry if we get someone who's good. So please, please. Maybe that's him. No, that's no not just him. some Guido. Just some poser. So please, call now, or just message them on Facebook. Five one nine four six five six 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 six. And we're back to the Thrashing Cows, aka the Backward Hats Club. Damn right, Greg. <laughs> Woo! Brett, you're a dick. He just took his hat off. Yeah, he that's that was the gag that I was going to do when we came back. Hope you enjoyed the commercial, and yes, they are looking for a new guitarist. They don't care what part of the country you're from. Unless you're willing to commute, they want you. We're a very multicultural band. White, black, Asian, Arab, they don't care. Female, male, unspecified gender, they don't give a shit. Just play guitar and rip. As long as you shred. <laughs> as long as you shred, because shredding is the only thing that matters in metal. Well, Great. yeah. And... <laughs> And c contributing helps. Yeah. You gotta contribute. Yes. Sorry about that. I had to. <laughs> I know, he disgusted you. What are you talking about? I, 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 I feel if I was to do a sexiest thrasher of the year, I feel he would win. I think Spencer would win. No, I feel he would win. Brett's not thrasher. He's a death metal kid. I still like thrash. I have the tight jeans style, man. I like how I point the mic down to your <laughs> Listens, <laughs> Listens in denim. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, the channel's called Thrash in Paradise, and you guys are on it. It doesn't mean it's the, just thrash. The new song is pretty thrashy, is it not? It is, yeah. From a fan perspective, it's obviously high-energy death metal, but it's pretty... It's in pretty a, thrashy, right? In a fan's perspective, there should have been a fucking wall of death in it. And I'm sorry, Kevin, I swore, but that really needed to be in there. I've, there needed to be a wall of death during it. I've actually never asked for a wall of death, but there's two kind of pauses in that song where I could have forced the fans to do that. So maybe next time we'll do that. Bigger I'm audience. Sure, I'm sure you'll be there, too. We'll yeah, 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 bigger crowd, too. Bigger crowd, bigger We're trying to play Hamilton probably, well, whenever we start doing shows again. So we want to come back to Hamilton. I'm from Hamilton. Fashion Paradise is based in Hamilton. We'll have you guys over for dinner. Maybe we'll get you on the guest list. I would we'll love that. Hamilton again. I like how tacos. My mom can make tacos, sure. Greg likes tacos. I like tacos too, as long as they're corn corn tortilla. Do you like Do you like tacos and beer? I, I actually don't drink beer anymore. It upsets my gut. I used to love beer, but I'm a vodka guy. Do you like? So if anyone ever wants to buy me a drink after a set, vodka. <laughs> Right here. I hate being rude and turning down beers when people are oh so courteous to provide one. So. Then you hand them to me. Yeah, that's true. FYI, Brett likes the girly drinks. Yeah, that's true. Sex on the beach? Yeah, it's pretty good. That's why I <laughs> <my jeans. laughs> Talk, speak. The bulge. 
Speaking about tight jeans, let's talk about Bennett's tight jeans. Holy shit. Holy shit. Ben, now, now that's a thrash. Thrash jeans, yeah. He spray paints them on. <laughs> Literal, basically. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the character, but it's like super thin legs and it's like a bowling ball of a body. <laughs> Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc.? No. <laughs> no. Same idea, though. Same idea. I feel like it's like the doctor in Mega Man or something. I don't know. Stop. Dr. Willie? Dr. Willie, yeah. <laughs> My God. No, when you said spray, um... Spray paints them on. Spray paints them on. I immediately thought I'd cry with a chance of meatballs where the kid invented spray on shoes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's all he does. Wakes up. Which can today? <laughs> what color today? <laughs> Black. And then wears ABBA shirts. Anything but metal shirts, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are we talking about Bennett? Yeah. yeah. Bennett. Okay, I was like, Bennett I was from like are you talking about this character or Bennett? Because Bennett does that too. No no no, 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 Bennett. Bennett, we love you and we look forward to having you guys back on the channel. You only rip on those you love. Exactly. Speaking of rip, how do you feel about Rip Ripperson? Love that we, guy. we love him too. I'm glad he came out tonight. He lives around the corner from me. He's banned from the chainsaw, so he better have been here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll have him on next time to explain why he's banned from the chainsaw. Yeah, get him to tell some of some of his crazy. You did, you did the tales of the rip. No, I did the rip crypt tour. Rip crypt tour. <laughs> you like that? I did. Thank you very much. It was funny. The only thing that pissed me off was I recorded it with my phone this way and not this way ah uh, so it's like phone view yeah but still Lesson it turned four. out great it turned out great no <laughs> actually because the idea i told you about earlier he's gonna be on in on it too okay nice yeah we're gonna the main i want secrets. secrets yes foreshadowing the future hopefully but no my mom she's obsessed with this idea to do um so my mom wants <clears throat> i got a metal vocalist to read my brother a bedtime story in his in death metal, death metal voice, yeah. or 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 in narrator voice. No, no, no like in. Yeah. I think Brett would be good at that. Yeah, I could do that. Like or well, or, or, good. Or, or, or or like the way Nathan Explosion does it. Uh, I don't know how any. Uh, or like the way Nathan Explosion, and then he's done. And then when he's done, he's like he's trying to read the. Fucking William Shakespeare like this. Because <laughs> he read 400 pages in a row. God damn it, Wii Sports Resort, stop. I do this not, guy's important. I do not pick up phone calls during interviews. That's the second time that's happened to us, man. Just turn yeah. the phone off. Yeah, I don't know. Mute it. You know, I gotta feel important somehow. <laughs> You're always know. important on this channel. <laughs> Center, man. Yeah, you're, you're you're you are the sexiest bass player in the world, next to Lexi Fox from Steel Panther. I'll take it. <laughs> He's pretty good looking. I'll say. I appreciate that. Okay, who do you think's better looking, Kyle from Invicta, Gabe from Raider, or Taylor from Cathartic Device? I think Kyle. Probably Kyle. <laughs> yeah, the, his printer ran out of ink and like. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like how this interview turned. Kyle's in. got that. That. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have wet dreams about Kyle. What are you talking about? He's he's Portuguese. He has those fuck me eyes. <laughs> Can you confirm or deny that after being in a band with him for so long? I don't have wet dreams about Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Wake I don't know what you're talking about, man. Wake up in the middle of the night, girlfriend goes, Ooh, is that for me? You're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I wanted the first interview to be. Just us talking the shit, you know? Yeah. Having a good time. We got That's in what interviews are. We like, got interrupted like... by cathartic demise of sound check. That, and I feel you guys were a bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because you were just like, who the fuck's this kid? Yeah. 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 I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what the thought process was. But. I was like, I don't know this guy. Yeah, it was just like, oh, he wants to do an interview. Yeah, sure, whatever. Oh, wait, tonight? Uh, okay. Okay, I guess. <laughs> That's a good yeah. breath. Like. <laughs> oh, okay. Shit, okay. Ira, we got this interview we gotta do. 
Yeah, you didn't even tell us that we were going to have this interview. Yeah, I forgot to tell them about this one. And this is the better one. Yeah. The funner one. It's okay. Right? Okay. And Colin's got this expanding reputation at this point. Literally, it's just, it's been a bombarded night for me, and it's awesome. I don't know why. Yeah, man, it's exciting. Fucking networking. All sorts of people. That's I almost always have my ringer off too. I turn it on today because I missed a couple calls from my coworker, ah. and I was like, like, I'm working in the trade. I need to talk to him, and then yeah. now I'm getting freaking harassed. I can confirm he's too. He's really hard to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now earlier you asked me who you who I would like to see you guys perform with, yeah. or even just try and figure something out with or yeah or tour with or tour with okay so i have i have a couple of names and i want your honest opinions about them okay okay sorry i'm getting over being sick okay i won't make it with you damn it kyle (laughs) i'm not kyle i'm the other pork chop (laughs) god not this again (laughs) okay revocation uh, I would love to, I've I've tried, not very hard, but I've tried in the past to play with Revocation. We have a good relationship with the Toronto promoter, but I would love to play with Revocation or tour with them. Uh, it'd be really cool to have Dave even do a guest solo, but I don't, there's other people who I think are higher on our guest solo list who would be more suiting for us who are friends. I would never say no. Who are friends with us. Yeah, yeah, we would never say no to the opportunity to play with Revocation. We have, I think both of us definitely have a lot of respect for them and admiration. I just thought of this now and I think it would be perfect because the last time so you... I think their bass player uses a pick too, so... <laughs> There'd be no haters there. Um, I just thought of it now because I remember in the last time you mentioned you want you really wanted to try and get into that technical death metal scene in Montreal. Yes. So I just thought about this band now, and I think I just thought, holy crap, that'd be an amazing lineup. How about you and Cataclysm? Actually, we've played with Cataclysm in Kitchener um, in 2014 or something yep. like that. At the Wax. At the Wax, wow. yeah, which is a, a venue a little bit bigger than the one we played at tonight. Starlight. Yeah, at Starlight um, in Waterloo. Um, but yeah, both venues are very nice. Um, yeah, we played with um, Cataclysm and Carrick Angren. Uh, you, you know Black them, right? Metal. I don't know if I'm saying their name right. You don't know them? Oh, uh, I might be saying it wrong. But um, <clears throat> at the time, Carrick Angren had uh, Jack Owen, Cannibal Corpse's, I think, original guitar player. Oh. Uh, he was live guitar for them. So uh, that was really cool, and he actually bought our CD that night. So oh, that was wow. like one of the best moments of my life. Did you get a picture with him? I did. That's perfect. Yeah. I didn't. You weren't part of the band then? No, I was part of the band, but. Greg's, Greg's always been in, in APOC since, like, not since no, day originals. one, but since, yeah, every show APOC's ever played, Greg has been so in the band. So you are the original drummer? Yes. Yeah. The sole drummer? I am. Ladies where's, and gentlemen, we're the sole members. Yeah, we're. So we have the original two here. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is awesome. We're the dirty diaper. <laughs> I don't know I why mean, I said I, that. I, I wipe, so. Yeah. Sorry again for starting. Um, Cryptopsy. Oh, we played with Cryptopsy also. I think our second show was with Cryptopsy. Um, in London, we've, we've opened for Cryptopsy and we would definitely love to play with them again. And uh, of course, yeah, we would tour with them too. I can't. I don't know if I've tried to get other shows with them, but Cryptopsy is awesome, and um, I mean their their guitar player is one of the best death metal producers, like probably in like the whole scene, especially especially for our style. Yeah, so any type of relationship with Cryptopsy would be really cool. But yeah, you're just gonna say yes to everything, aren't you? Yeah. Fast think out. Yes. Greg just likes good opportunities. Yeah. I'm not an ideas man by any means. I, Brett's the ideas I man. I like to play with my idols and, and get that fucking, gratif- get my gratification <laughs> from people I look up to saying, oh yeah, you're fucking good, yeah. Who's your idol? Chuck. 
Yeah, chocolate. I really, I think probably out of every band, like we've played with a lot of good bands. Out of every band that we haven't played with, I think Inferi is my number one right now. Or them, or Deviant Process, or maybe Fear of Them. I'd, yeah, but I shoot for Inferi like hard every time, so. Hard. Yeah. I, like gay porn hard? Like I've got a hard on for Inferi, yeah. Greg, your thoughts? I love Inferi too. But a band I would have loved to play with is called Singularity AZ. Oh, I'd love to play with AZ, them too. AZ, uh, Arizona. Greg is a very big fan of their drummer. So. Yeah, Nathan Bigelow. He played for he plays for Archaic. He played in Alter Beast, Singularity. He did he did, uh, did live drums for uh, Virvum last time they played yep. in North America. Yeah. Okay. So I mean I look up to him. He's a very phenomenal good drummer. drummer. Yeah, very good drummer. Yeah, I'd love to play with those guys. I'd also like to play with Archaic because they're they're really 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 nice guys. The uh, like Nathan's in Archaic. Yep. Um, both their guitar players are nice. I know Chris. Like I've talked to him a little bit more than Alex, but they're both really nice guys. And Jared's a really nice guy. So it'd be cool to play with Archaic because I think I know Chris is a fan of our band. So it's always cool like when there's a band that you look up to and then you find out they dig your band too. Yeah. Actually, I would really like to play with Shadow of Intent because they're they're getting really huge. And last year I saw them with uh, the Black Dahlia Murder. Okay. And I gave their vocalist our CD and he told me that he was actually a fan of our band and he just had just checked us out like three weeks prior to that. So That's awesome. Yeah, like that type of stuff like just means a lot to me. Like I appreciate having those interactions foreshadowing maybe a future tour possibly that'd be sick i think they're independent too so shadow yeah independent bands like independent with, bands with, matter with sick throaty vocals <laughs> throaty vocals all right i thought my vocals were <laughs> that's funny. what she said I thought, okay like i'm gonna do the thing right now but i thought my vocals were sounding pretty good tonight like what you you were in the crowd right like yeah. it's sounding thick right oh yeah they were sounding good you always yeah. sound good all right well some nights I think it sounds better than others. Tonight I thought it sounded pretty good. The vocals are going to sound fucking thick on this EP. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely have him read his bedtime story to my little brother. <laughs> he's seven. He's an asshole. I'll be the troll under the bridge. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, your bones. Great way to start it. He'll crawl out from under the bed and then sit in the chair and start reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea so much. I want to do that. Can we do that? <laughs> I'll just put like swamp all over me. <laughs> I don't know how else no, to describe we'll have it. you wear a shirt that says, I am the troll. I am the troll. <laughs> Grant, I love you. I'm sorry for calling you an asshole. Um, same as Grant. You mind saying hi to Grant? Your brother? Yeah. What's his hi. name? Grant. Hi, Grant. I'm hey, gonna, Grant. I'm going to scare the socks off you, bud. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually a really cool little brother, honestly. He's been to probably more shows than I have when I was his age. Nice. He's nice. been front row to the Headstones, seven, Billy Talon. Seven? seven, yeah. Foo Fighters fl wow. last year. Wow. Yeah, he keeps bugging me to go to these big concerts, like to see you guys, Cathartic, eight, you guys are APOC. It's hard for bands that are smaller to, like, play all ages shows yeah. sometimes. But I wish, I wish they happened a little bit more often. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's cool to see like when young kids come out because yeah. I was going to shows when I was like 10 and stuff like that so yeah like it's not it's not that often but I remember like people like propsing me and stuff like when I was young so I was cool. here for a show when I was 10 actually it was at <clears throat> the Festival of Friends in Hamilton and it was actually for uh, Chris Jericho's band uh, Fozzie oh, oh yeah? yeah nice yeah funny thing my dad who doesn't like metal um or like some of it you know he listens it, to it fan. because not not a big fan of it uh, you know he took me to my first metal show nice <laughs> nice and my mom since then has taken me to every other one nice or i have but i still think that's cool that he was able to take me to my first because of our bond of loving wrestling yeah, yeah. nice main reason why we went because it's chris jericho it's band, yeah. yeah makes sense Exactly. Are you guys fans of wrestling? 
I don't follow it super, like, I don't follow really any sports these days, but I used to enjoy wrestling, and then I, I would enjoy MMA, too, and I also used to follow hockey, but yeah, I, ha I haven't followed any sports in a while. I just... I just work and friggin' try to play, Life. try to play bass and hang out with my girlfriend and my dog. But. I used to watch a lot of MMA when it was starting, like when it was like Team Canada versus the Team USA back in that day. And then I don't know, I just stopped watching it. Wrestling, well, I would never watch too much, but I've been to a couple uh, like <gasps> live matches and it was awesome. Yeah, so much energy. Ryder, the drummer of Rippert, he loves wrestling. Oh do, yeah. Do you know him? Have you met him or just Rip? Actually, he had he sh sold me a shirt at uh, May fourth at the Boathouse for Cathartic Demise. So he just points oh, at me and goes, "Hey, you want a shirt? Buy a shirt. <laughs> buy a shirt. Fifteen bucks. I want to see you. Twenty bucks. Here you go. Way to sell it. Yeah. He was. <laughs> he wiped his ass with a Raider shirt and sold it instead of fifteen for twenty bucks. And you got 20 bucks! <laughs> and, and when you're a boss, when you're a boss. And the sales pitch was, hey, this shirt touched my ass! You want it! Alpha. alpha. Totally alpha. Yeah. Ain't no Omega dog, that's for sure. <laughs> well, since you guys asked me who was my first ever show, what was your first ever show? If you remember. Uh, my first big one was my mom took me to see Def Leppard when I was pretty young, like probably 10 or 11 but my cousin used to be in like a punk metal kind of band and i used to go see his band like all the time when i was like real young so i would see my cousin's band used to be called kramer and then they were called yell the burden uh i used to see tugnut and uh which guys from tugnut went on to form the current band graber um i used to see um trying to think of like disgust and like a couple of these old cambridge bands i remember like like the first big one was the Def leopard one but i remember when i was in i think ninth grade me and my buddy who i used to write music with at the time we were walking to a friend's house through cambridge and uh we stopped at a bar and we're like hey isn't this that decapitated band that we heard a few weeks ago that our friend showed us and literally decapitated from Poland was playing at 69 pickups in Cambridge. And we stood there, and just a sec, we stood there and did this for the whole time, their whole set. <laughs> for like probably 20 minutes. And then we just, as soon as they stopped, we were just like, oh, <laughs> and just off. walked off. <laughs> we, we literally just dipped as soon as they were done. But we. So we, you didn't get in trouble? No, but we could have probably like went around back and met them, but we were too stupid at the time. So. <laughs> That's awesome, Greg. But I saw decapitated with VTech when I was like 12. Before he passed away? <laughs> yeah. Damn. No, I saw him after he passed away. Dude! <laughs> my, my first concerts was my mom took me to Meatloaf. Oh, wow. At Darien Lake, Six Flags. So that was my first concert. Is that, that's in the States, right? Yeah. And then my first metal concert was Summer Slaughter 2011, I believe. Which I think Black Dahlia was headlining. There's like Oceano, Power Glove was playing. Um, I might have saw that year too. I forget who else, but Power Glove. Like, like Nintendo Power. They cover oh, like oh Power Glove, yeah. Nintendo Core. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. They cover like uh, I don't know all those like older movies like This Is Halloween, shit like that. Tattoo or a scar? It's a scar. Okay. <laughs> I was looking, I was like, is this? That's another story. Okay. I was like, is that the Sony tattoo or something? <laughs> it's a bass clef. It'd be a lot cooler. It's a bass clef. Almost. We'll go with that. No. Yeah. We don't like Sony at the moment here at Thrasher's Paradise. Oh, okay. Spider Man. What kind of zoom is oh, that? Yeah. H1N? H1N1? What kind of handicam is that? Amazon? It's not a Sony? No. <laughs> no. Okay, all right, just checking. <laughs> now, conveniently enough, I didn't have any Sony products, so it worked out perfectly. Perfect. Uh, as I mentioned, we support the MCU, and we are heartbroken that Spider-Man will no longer be a part of it. Yeah, I like Spider-Man. and Tom and Holland, Spider-Man? Yeah, man. I just, I figure, I, th I wish that they did a few more of the villains like that I knew from childhood like Mysterio and like guys like that like just 
you know, don't leave it where it's at. Like I know. that's now the other people, like whoever owns it now, is gonna do more of that shit. But it's, I don't know. They should have just done more before. Yeah. Greg, your thoughts? <laughs> I'm not really following any of it. <laughs> you don't. You don't watch Spider Man. <laughs> I don't really watch movies and shit. <laughs> Okay, so Brett, we'll just continue this conversation. We'll break this down, <laughs> I'll take my candy. So, who, who's better, Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield? I, I honestly like Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, though. Yeah, I kind of like him, too. Yeah, me, too. I thought he was a good cast. I thought I thought the first two weren't bad, but then the third one was just really, eh. It's yeah. always the first. Like, always the first is the best. The, the third s- one was that Sandman one. Sandman though, right? like, and Phantom why, and why would New they, Green okay, Yeah, that was cool, but like what that Sandman guy was so irrelevant. They could have done like the Hobgoblin or like that Mysterio guy, or there's so many cooler, more relevant villains. Rhino. Yeah, yeah. yeah like so many better they villains. Do that that in they, a future one? Yeah, they did with Andrew Garfield, but they really messed it up. Yeah. Lucky I didn't see that. Yeah. No, uh, apparently. What they were, what I was told for the rumors was for the new spy for Spider-Man Three. Apparently, it was going to be called Home Run. Smart name for the, by the way. It was going to be the Sinister Six. So like a whole bunch of villains. Yeah. Did they even they never even had Kingpin in any of those, did they? In a... Kingpin, you mean from Daredevil? Kingpin? No, like Kingpin, like from the cartoon, the big fat guy who was like the mob boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was the he's been in Daredevil. But he wasn't in the Spider-Mans. He was in the cartoons. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. 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 I couldn't even really see because the light. Yeah. So. We, just, we just wanted to make sure we weren't getting stolen from. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, yeah, that was that's the that was what was supposed to happen with Spider-Man. Yeah, disappointing. Yeah, disappointed too. I'm just happy Black Widow will have the Taskmaster in it. Taskmaster. Jesus. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? No. Lost me okay, I'm sorry. Like old school Batman with Mr. Freeze, like you know. I know Schwarzenegger Freeze. Do you like that? I love that shit. You love the puns? I do. <laughs> They're so cheesy and lame, but it's like 94, 90 or whatever. It's like awesome. Your favorite villain is probably voted the most hated or most badly casted villain of the I era. I love the room. <laughs> I don't know that one. Either. You need to see the room. I don't need. Human don't centipede. Know. No. So a lot of people are gonna see this. But you fucking guys don't know the room. No. Watch it. It's like so bad. It's good. I know the panic room. Okay, no. we'll watch it together. We'll we'll yeah. watch the room together. Next interview, we'll watch The Room before. We'll do a reaction to The Room. Yeah, there you go. Hey, honest to God, it would be <laughs> we'll, really good. We'll, we'll watch it first, then we'll do... We'll record it on camera, and we'll just talk <laughs> we, to each other about what the hell happened. We probably <laughs> could reenact the movie. That's how bad it is. Oh, God. Like, literally. I've seen Fear and Lovering in Las Vegas, and it's a, I... It's a, it's a pretty good movie. I, like I made the mistake of watching it sober. Oh. Rip. Never mind. And then I was just watching, like, what the hell's going what on? What is going on? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> what is this? Why is Johnny Depp talking like that? <laughs> Why is Edward Scissorhand smoking? <laughs> and snorting Pez. <laughs> Seeing kids? That's not Edward. <laughs> Juggies? <laughs> <laughs> What's a better stoner movie, Dazed and Confused or Fear and Lothering in Las Vegas? Um, Dazed and Confused is, is easier to follow the yeah. story. I've only seen Dazed and Confused. And I think Dazed and Confused has a little, like Fear and Loathing is infamous, but I think Dazed and Confused just makes you wish it was summer, you know? So it's like, yeah, I, I guess I'll give you that one. All right, all right, all right. Moving on now, it's time to play everyone's favorite game. I hope you remember this game, Brett. It's time for Thrash. We changed the name. Or Trash. Oh, okay. Rip came up with that name. Okay. Yeah, uh, Greg, since you're the new newbie to the channel, we're going to explain the rules of Thrash or Trash. So yes, are you intrigued by the name? I am. Okay. I feel like it's going to be like a good or bad type thing. It is, actually. You got it right. All right, then I know. Let's just fucking do it. <laughs> Approve or disapprove. <laughs> okay. So basically, I'm just going to say band, song, or album. 
Trash, you like it. Trash, you don't like it. What if I don't know it? Then you're a poser. Like, we fucking hate posers. Trash. Excuse me. Right, I got you. Okay, seriously, there's a car coming. Oh, wait, turning. We're going to have to move again, aren't we? Well, we're not going to. No. We're not going to move. We're doing an interview. Okay, gentlemen. Oh, wait, no, he's just... I really don't know what this person is doing. Oh, you got to back out? I'm going to pull up and make room for another person to pull Okay, oh, yeah. second commercial break. Hey, how's it going, Brett? Oh, hey, Greg. When did you get there? Today. Right on. You know what? We need a new guitar player. And it needs to be you. As long as you're good. And can play well. And can keep up with Ira, who isn't here. But you gotta be able to song right. And song learn. And song right. And basically pretend you're a songwriter. better than us. Yes. But you can't be better than us. But you need to be just as good as us to be in the band. And just as handsome as us. So, if you want to be the new APOC guitarist, you better eat a lot of spinach. <laughs> that you sh that I show you out? Yeah, that you shout us out because we did post the commercial and we're back from commercial again! Hey. Greg, your thoughts on the commercials? Please help us. Please, come on. We're desperate, but like not so desperate that we're gonna, you know. No, he's lying. We need someone now. <laughs> Are you looking for a lead or a rhythm? Well, oh, yeah. We, we're, we're the type of band who has. Two lead, two lead guitar type band. It doesn't matter what, if you're a lead or a li rhythm guy, just come play guitar, shred it out for them because they're desperate. No, it doesn't It matter. doesn't even matter if you can make it to the shows because we can clearly play as a three piece. Hell, it doesn't even matter if you speak English as your first language or not. Just play guitar. Amen. Just at least have a profile picture of you holding a guitar. Play with your feet, that's even better. And they mean an actual guitar, not your penis. Yeah, they're skin flute. <laughs> no, the happy whistle? <laughs> <laughs> or the kazoo? <laughs> no, you know what you need? A cowbell. I had one once, but oh! Brett, yeah, but I Brett actually, I didn't, didn't like it. Like it. Yeah. Come on, you could. It was like, what is that garbage? Yeah. <laughs> Brett, can you confirm that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can confirm. True story. Now he's got two splashes and two rides like a real man. I actually had one ride tonight. What's a ride? Ding, 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 ding. So, Rush. Yes. <laughs> ride serves a purpose that a cowbell ruins. You don't know. Still the greatest skit ever on Saturday Night Live history, let's be honest. The cowbell? Yeah. When you have Christopher Walkins in on a skit, how can it ever go wrong? I don't think I've Walken seen is, that. Oh, I gotta see this. I love Christopher Walkins. I'll send you guys the link. I'll send you a Facebook a friend player. request, and I'll send you the link on Facebook. Yeah. Interesting. Because we're friends in real life, actually. Isn't that right, Brett? This is true. We're going to get beers sometime soon. Cool. Or, no. I'll we'll drink, get girly drinks. I'll drink, yeah, we'll, we'll drink girly drinks because real friends make themselves look like douchebags for their other friends. Yeah, we're going to have sex on the beaches. In a bar. Literally. Yeah. Literally. We're going to have sex in the bar on a beach. I'm single and a virgin, so I don't know what that is. Sex on the beach in a bar, in a bar Brett's on the beach. experience. they will show you around. <laughs> Single in the bar on a beach in the sex in the bar. At the door in the door. <laughs> Maybe turn the lights down low. Just don't just don't take any drinks from Bill Cosby. Oh, I kiss you all over. Over and again. <laughs> Wedding singer, love that. <laughs> that was from Happy Gilmore. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is Happy oh, Gilmore. Happy I wanna kiss you all over. <laughs> Asian lady come up. You don't want breakfast! <laughs> <laughs> I Remember, seen those movies it's all in the hips.
Get off of me! <laughs> Get off of me! That's like my all-time favorite movie. Not gonna lie, he sounded very gay when he said, Get off of me! Get off of me, I giggle like a little girl. <laughs> oh my god, get off of me. Brett, how does that make you feel? That? Yeah. It makes me feel like I fucking haven't seen these movies in way too long. Do you remember Little Nicky? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I remember best out of those early Adam Sandler movies. I don't. I've never seen that one. What? Oh, it's so funny. Dude, on the my head. my pop culture, like movies and shit. I am Dude, like. I recommend that one. I will. Okay. I know. I know. Like Mike. <laughs> That's not a fucking Adam Sandler movie. I know. Sorry, I was just looking at it. It's like, oh, I have my battery's almost dead. Okay, oh. we'll, we'll click through this. <laughs> We're just having no, a good right. time. Yeah, I know. I We're just this. literally having a good time. I will just be up front. I'm enjoying this interview very much. Good. I hope yeah. you guys are too. Yeah, just chatting it, man. Yeah, literally. Okay. The, the first third was like about metal, and then we talked about random shit. Yeah, now we're talking about more <laughs> random shit and metal. It's perfect. Oh, okay, we're going to do. We're going to play the game. Thrash your trash. Thrash your trash. Are you guys ready? You're ready. Let's start off. Cannabis corpse. Thrash. Thrash. Sleep, don't smoke her. Thrash. Because I saw them, they're awesome. Just say it, Brian, <sighs> we know. He says trash. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't really listen to sleep, but okay. I... I haven't even listened to them enough. Dope smoker. I haven't listened to them enough to dislike them, but yeah, just because you say dope smoker, to troll Alex Produska, I'm gonna have to say trash. Okay, that lady running, thrash or trash? Trash. She, she definitely ran like a pansy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, and one last one that we're gonna talk about. I feel this is a very underrated album, and it it shouldn't be. You, you guys may have heard of it. Have you heard of APOC? Possibly. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's called Apocalypse. Um, I'm actually going to say trash. And it's because every time I listen to the two part song, there's small little uh, pickups. Yeah, things that didn't get fixed that I wanted to get fixed. Um, and I, I just, I don't really enjoy listening to the, the EP anymore. So oh, really? the band at the time wasn't as serious I, as it was I, now. Yeah, or, yeah. And like there were certain things that never really got tightened up until we were recording, and then they never got properly tightened up in the studio. And yeah, so there are certain things that people would never notice having listened to those songs. But every time I listen back to it, it makes me unsatisfied hearing. Okay. And I feel like those songs, the songwriting is really good. So it's like good songs with uh, just things about it that I can't overlook. I totally could see uh, Apocalypse re-recorded, like all the songs. I, I would like to do that also. Maybe. A and have Chris do more, like come back and Our do vocals. Uh, yeah, Chris would come back and do vocals if we did that. Who's Chris? Our original guitarist who, like... He recorded guitar on Apocalypse, but he never did the vocals. Okay. And I had a guy who, like, Greg and I used to be friends with do vocals, but it would just, it would just mean, it would, the songs would mean a whole lot more to me if they were edited properly, like how I wanted them, and then had me and Chris on vocals. That would be truly how they, it was, I, how it was intended to be. I would love to redo it because my drumming skill from then till now i was like a noob i yeah. city of statues it was the first song we ever did together and i never did blast beats at all on it yeah that was so wild. if you listen to it <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> just 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 talk oh oh no this guy's funny. well what do you want to do man what do you want to do <laughs> teasing me <laughs> no but from my drum skill then to now i would love to just redo it just to intensify things i just wanted to say as a side note i really appreciate the fact that you guys were really honest about that and that you guys were cool with it and you guys were totally cool with throwing your own ep under the bus yeah i mean i still am proud of it mm -hmm. for the most part but it's one of those things in retrospect i don't think i'm gonna look back on 
Awakening Inception in retrospect and have as much disappointments as I have about the EP. As long as I have splashes every time we record. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it was in J.O. Films' top five um, unsigned bands yeah. album of the year last year. Thanks, J.O. And more importantly, it's just, it was such a good album and deserves that spot for sure. So could we see it as Apocalypse maybe as a 10-year anniversary Really I would love to do that. That's always been on my mind. Yeah, that's that seems definitely plausible. And ten, yeah, ten years is like a good. That's something that I think we could actually work towards and try try to shoot for. Yeah. I I'm just giving them good ideas tonight. Yeah, you are. First, I did Second Awakening, which could be the brother album to Awakening Inception. You never know. You never know. And now, yeah. just ten year anniversary. Now it's time to play, now it's time to ask a very serious question on the channel. Brett, you experienced this before, so that's why we kicked it up a notch and we're asking a completely different question compared to last time. All right. It's called the poser question. Um, Greg, I'm sorry, but this might be tough on you, okay? I'm sure it will. <laughs> okay. Start with me then. Okay. Well, since, this, this is your, since you are a virgin to the channel, we will ask you the default poser question. Who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God? Lemmy. Wrong. Oh. Lemmy is God. Fuck! <laughs> Ira got that right last time. Ira is the one that saved you, both of your asses. Okay, this one might be more up your alley. Okay. This is, this is the Devil Horns. It is signature to the metal genre. Who is the creator of it? Uh, Ronnie James Dio is the one who popularized it. I don't know if he necessarily created it. We, we consider it as created, and that is correct. Congratulations, you guys survived. that one. Like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I would I gave too. an obvious one for the first one. The double horns. The balls of God. <laughs> and yes, Brett is talking about himself. He does have the balls of God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for this re- Re, 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 re uh, mastered re. interview. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And we'll definitely have you guys back on to help promote the new EP and for other future stuff. Thanks for Looking having us, man. Being back. No Thanks, Colin. Okay, and now we're just going to fade away by going down. Until next time, everyone, keep on thrashing. Gentlemen, we know what to do. Just go down. Thanks, thrashers. Cut. We need a guitarist! No!